So we know that Dante, Virgil, and Nero are incredibly powerful. But do you know why they are in a tier of their own? The first component to this answer is Sparta himself. Sparta is the father to Dante and Virgil, and the grandfather to Nero. Sparta was also the demon general that went against his own demon kind to save humanity. At the time, Mundus was the king of the underworld, who had a demonic army which included demons like Griffin, Phantom, Shadow, Nightmare, and Sparta himself within this army. Sparta at one point decided that he didn't want to help Mundus with his plan of merging the underworld and the human world together and betrayed his demon kind. Mundus and Sparta would have an incredibly powerful fight to which Sparta would be able to seal Mundus away. To add context on how powerful Mundus is, when he created Nightmare, he understood that this being was capable of destroying the endless underworld and created his own universe when fighting Dante at the end of Devil May Cry 1. And Sparta was powerful enough to go toe to toe with him and defeat him. Sparta was later able to fight the likes of Argusax, who was on a, uh, let's see, who was another high level demon threat that was relative to Mundus, as Argusax and Mundus at one point had the underworld split because they were enemies and fought each other with their own forces. Then we have things like where Arkham would gather the sword of Sparta, and as a human would be able to overwhelm Devil May Cry 3 Dante. Finally, when Chen the Cannibal from the Devil May Cry 2 novel received the Beast Head, he would mention to Dante that he was 70% demon and had the knowledge of Sparta's swordsmanship. While yes, Chen did have infinite knowledge because of the Beast Head, he did directly mention that his swordsmanship from Sparta was what he used against Dante when they fought. And this is the same Dante that within the same novel had just previously defeated Void Mundus who was the embodiment of the demon world itself. Now that we know how powerful Sparta was when he was around, let's continue on to his twin sons and get into the original question. So later Sparta would settle down, fall in love with Eva, a human woman, and they had twin boys. This would make his kids half demon and half human, and at even a child's age would be able to fight off demonic threats. When Dante and Virgil are kids, they get into a fight as kids do, and Virgil runs away from the house as he gets flustered with Dante and his mother, at the time believing Virgil was the one that started the fight. While alone, Virgil was attacked by Munus' demonic forces, and at this point Virgil feels he has been completely abandoned and fights off the demons with no effort. But what exactly makes these children capable of fighting off demons? Part of the answer is the human blood running in their veins. Let's give an example. So we have what is called the Clyphoth fruit. This fruit is something that requires human blood to be concentrated for the demon that plans to consume it, and it makes them unbelievably powerful. It is also noted that human blood is the very embodiment of power for demons. As for the Clyphoth fruit specifically, it is something that propelled Mundus to become powerful enough to become the king of the underworld. Along with Yurzen having the single goal of gaining more power, he was siphoning human blood while on his throne at the beginning of Devil May Cry 5 and then eventually creates and consumes his own Clyphoth fruit. So, with Dante and Virgil both being half-human, the idea is that their demonic biology is thriving on the human biology within their veins, thus passively increasing their power as time simply goes on. Where normal demons aren't going to have an abundance of human blood lying around, since they were left in the underworld thanks to Sparta, meaning that basic demons will simply be overwhelmed by the likes of Virgil even as a child, as we just went over. To further add to this, both Virgil and Dante are equipped with the three weapons that Sparta himself had split his power into. This includes the Yamato, which is noted to be powerful enough to cut space-time itself and can create portals between the human world and the underworld. The Rebellion which is capable of clashing with the Yamato, and Dante uses it to unlock his own Devil Trigger form. Then we have the Sword of Sparta, which has shown the ability to allow wielders of it to retrieve Sparta's power. Like we just went over with Arkham, he became a pseudo form of Sparta and wasn't able to contain it, which required both Dante wielding the Rebellion and Virgil wielding the Yamato to defeat Arkham, who himself was wielding the third blade, the Sword of Sparta. Then, in Devil May Cry 5, Dante merges both the Sword of Sparta and the Rebellion to transform it into Devil Sword Dante, which makes him powerful enough to take on an amped up Yurzen that would later consume the Clyphoth fruit and Dante no diffs him. 
As for Virgil, he retrieves the Yamato, splits into V and Yurzen, consumes a Clyphoth fruit, and restores himself back to a healthier and more powerful Virgil than we saw in Devil May Cry 3 or as Nello Angelo in Devil May Cry 1. So, by the end of Devil May Cry 5, we have Virgil and Dante, both capable of unlocking their Sin Devil Trigger forms, and they are without a doubt the most powerful in the series. But we haven't even talked about Nero yet. Nero, the son of Virgil, and with the assumption that Virgil didn't find a female demon, considering that Virgil was in Fortuna right around the time Nero was conceived, and that's where Nero was found, we can assume Nero is three quarters human and one quarter demon in his blood. With what we went over earlier, with the demonic power constantly feeding on human blood, this would mean that Nero would be able to feed his demonic power at a faster rate than Dante and Virgil. So, with the bloodline originating from Sparta, Nero should be more powerful than Dante and Virgil, right? Not quite. With Dante and Virgil having been alive longer than Nero, they have that as an advantage, but they are also wielding power directly from Sparta, in the form of the swords that we just went over. Nero doesn't have anything supporting him to that extent, as he is equipped with the Blue Rose, the Red Queen, and his Devil Breakers, which were all manufactured. Nothing at the level of Sparta's power. What is actually the most impressive, though, is that Nero with no Devil Arm in any form, let alone from Sparta, he was able to obtain his Devil Trigger form from his will alone, compared to Dante and Virgil, who required a Devil Arm with Sparta's power. Then immediately after unlocking his base Devil Trigger form is able to display its power by stopping Dante and Virgil when in their Sin Devil Trigger forms. This last part is pretty impressive because when Dante unlocked his Devil Trigger form he seemed pretty out of control. So very different in how Nero was able to control his versus Dante was more uncontrollable. Then after stopping the Sparta sons from killing each other, they head out to the underworld and believe Nero to now be powerful enough to protect the human world in their stead while they destroy the Clyphoth plant in the underworld. So with Sparta's history and raw power, Dante and Virgil wielding their swords that contain their father's direct power and being demon-human hybrids, then Nero's rate of growth, and finally all of them having Sparta's demonic blood running through their veins, they are insane. Hopefully this answers your question, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.